there. Welcome to our Sunday special. Trust that we have lots and lots of interesting reports for you tonight. But before we move on, let me refresh your mind on what to expect on our package tonight. Production of rice, one of the staples in Nigeria, is about to receive a boost as the Ogoja Ultra Modern Rice Mill is set to commence production of the commodity. Women are said to be more passionate and determined when pursuing a cross. Could this be the reason for their dominance in church activities? Watch out for details of this report and more on our Sunday special tonight. Good evening and welcome. I am Justina Etam. with the main news. The ban on importation of rice by the federal government is being strengthened by the Cross River State Government as the newly constructed Ogoja Ultra Modern Rice Mill is set to increase the production of rice. Maureen Liu Ajom was at the mill and now reports. Rice is one of Nigeria's staples and the demand for the commodity by an average Nigerian family has always been on the rise, hence the need for a bigger cultivation of the crop to meet needs of the citizenry. Working with the vision of the federal government to meeting the rice demands of the people, the Cross River State Government through these five tons per hour daily Ugoja Ultra Modern Rice Mill is expected to flood the markets with standard processed locally cultivated rice while also improving on the state's economy and the country's revenue generation. Cross River State Commissioner for Agriculture and Natural Resources Okun Ouna goes round various stages and units of the rice processing plant and assures of the state government's readiness to empower farmers in the state to cultivate enough rice to feed the meal as well as build capacity of the youths for service delivery in the rice meal. Governor of Cross River State Professor Benayade is keying into the president's vision of food security and sustainability. The factory is ready for commissioning. It's ready. So it's now left for farmers in Cross River State, farmers outside Cross River State to pull their paddies into the rice factory in Cross River State. As you can see, the, the, the paddies lying here, these are paddies that have been acquired from some farms, local farms within the Guja local government area. This warehouse is supposed to be filled. From the massive investment we have seen here, you know, so many of our youths will, will, be, will be engaged. We need to get our people trained. Cross River State Government's industrialization drive is spread across the length and breadth of the state. From Ogoja local government area of Cross River State, Maureen Liu, Ajom, NTN News. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, has flagged off the distribution of engagement letters and devices to 49 independent monitors under the National Social Investment Program held in Calabar, Cross River State Capital. Achibong Basir reports that the independent monitors are to supervise the program beneficiaries within their, locally, within their locality using a standardized reporting tool which would help measure the impact of the program. Each independent monitor will be given a unique user ID and a password to gain access to the platform to enable the ministry and the state team determine if the independent monitors are collecting timely, complete and correct data. I feel delighted with federal government, most especially the president of the country, uh, President Mohamed Ubuari. Meet with those leaders liaise with them and know how to go to those different um, fields of um, um, area that we need to work. Representing the Minister, Director Human Resource Management, Babatunde Jaji says, while the engagement of independent monitors is not new, but the Ministry has methodically reviewed the modalities and design of previous engagements to build a more robust and proactive strategy to monitor the program. The engagement of independent monitors for NSIP, therefore, is one of the strategy 
to ensure that this program achieved the desired results. Because the sustainability of this program depends a lot on our ability at the field to ensure we deliver on the mandate. To achieve the overall objective of the National Social Investment Program as introduced by President Mohamed Buhari, the independent monitors are urged to show commitment and passion for the job, which is intended to give a new lease of life to the vulnerable in the society. In Calabar, Achibombasi, NTN News. Operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, have uh, arrested a Nigerian woman based in Brazil at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, with 100 pellets of cocaine concealed in her private parts and handbag. In a statement, the mother of three was arrested on Friday night on arrival in Abuja via Qatar Air from Sopolo, Brazil, through Doha. Upon search, two wraps of cocaine inserted in her private part were extracted with another 88 pellets stuffed in socks discovered hidden in her handbag, which was asked to deliver for a fee of $3,000. In a related development, narcotic officers attached to a Korea company in Lagos also intercepted 500 grams of ketamine concealed in the walls of a wooden box filled with a bitter cola originated from Douala, Cameroon and heading to the United States of America. While another 500 grams of methamphetamine hidden in automobile parts going to Australia were also seized at the firm. NDLA also intercepted over 110 kilograms of assorted illicit drugs in Plateau and Quara states. This include 39 kg of diazepam, 35 kg of EXO-5 tablets, 1.7 kg of flumtrazepam tablets, 67.2 kg of tramadol, and 260 kilograms of pentazosine. Poised to ensure national security in synergy with the aid of conventional security operatives for effective community policing at grassroots to protect vulnerable farmers without the use of modern technology was at the heart of a discourse held in Calabar. Odia reports that the Hunters Council of Nigeria, organizers of the meeting with its constructive security input by the stakeholders, is pushing for policy formulation and implementation to incorporate the most indigenous security apparatus in the mainstream security scheme in Nigeria. Vested with natural intelligence and information gathering through inspirations, effective observations and body languages, a hunter is at advantage to predict criminality in turbulent territories by identifying sponsors, organizers, and beneficiaries of such crime. This is coming from the Deputy Commander General Hunters Council of Nigeria, Professor Nelson Fashino, who says the emergence of Hunters Council of Nigeria is primarily to complement the effort of regular security agencies to combat crimes and criminalities at the grassroots, which requires support with tools, equipment, incentives and the enabling environment to operate and reduce insurgency in the country to its barest minimum. I envisioned to contribute enormously to the security of Nigeria using the instrument of the Hunter Council of Nigeria as incorporated under the CAC. We are trying to see how we can create a synergy between us and the other uh, forces and also to educate the youth of what they are supposed to do to help themselves. Resource persons from different uniform security organizations describe the importance of intelligence gathering and information sharing as integral for successful joint operations while reawakening the consciousness of the public that security is everyone's business. It's very simple. These are the people who know the locations. These are the people who know the bushes. These are the people who know where the forests are situated. These are the people who even know the people that live with them and are around them. The fact that it gives direction and purpose, thereby allowing for prompt execution of assigned tasks by personnel of participating agencies. I have also recommended 
that government must find a way around to reduce bottlenecks and make processes and systems less cascading. Participants at the summit says the event is a moral booster. I have learned that security cannot be done just by one person. It needs synergy, cooperation, understanding, love among security agencies. We have learned a lot from other personnel agencies, what they have taught us and what we should know about the security Organization. There were representatives from military and paramilitary organizations, traditional rulers, youth and religious leaders, and other key players in the security sector who lent their voices on ways to curb the country's insecurity. In Calabar, Ode Alenyo, NTA News. Nigerian youth in Akwaibom state have taken a position to rally around government policies that will change the fortune of the country for good. At an Epiphany summit in Ugyo, Akwaibom State, the youths posit that no longer will they sit on the fence and allow unpatriotic politicians use them for their selfish interest. Clement Barikwi reports. The youth are the leaders of tomorrow according to a popular adage, but these Nigerian youths cannot sit and wait for tomorrow to come before taking leadership position. They believe their tomorrow actually begins today. It is the youth that will decide the future of this country, and it begins today. Let's see how we can change the way we do things. Let's see how we can change the way we look at things. Young persons need to begin to see beyond what every other person can offer them and look into what they can offer the society. Taking the country from where it is to where it should be, according to resource persons, demands collective effort, and the youth must be at the forefront. None of these vices happening in any society without the active collaboration of the youth. I think the first thing is for the youth to be aware of their powers. We are expected to, however, begin to gradually rebuild the minds of the youth to appreciate the critical role they have to play in the intervention of peace and harmony in every society. Our youth are very resourceful, they are very, very dependable. It's because we don't give them direction so others mislead them. Chairman on the occasion, Senator Efion Bob, while commending the youth for the prevailing peace in Aquabom State, advised them to up their game by pursuing education and skills that will make them relevant. With the theme, Changing the narratives, the summit brought together youth leaders from the 31 local government areas in Akwaibom State. In Uyo, Clement Barakui, NTA News. Let's take a quick break for now. We'll be back shortly with more reports. Please don't go away. As news breaks from the north, south, east and west of Nigeria, we bring it to you. News from the length and breadth of Cross River State is sent to you via this channel. With movers and shakers in various spheres of influence talking to us, we cover niche and showcase our experience in broadcasting. Because it's NTA Calabar before others. You can't get this anywhere else. It's only here on NTA Calabar News, showing at this time, 3 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and 7 p.m. every day. NTA Calabar News. Our experience counts. Welcome back to the rest of the news. A name is a word or phrase that constitutes the designation of a person or thing. People oftentimes bear names to reflect religious and cultural backgrounds as well as political and security reasons. Many have changed their names to suit their status or benefit. Why? Erika Ivy went to town and came back with this report. Names present uniqueness and identity of persons, place or thing. The sense of personal identity and uniqueness that a name gives is at the heart of why names interest us and why they are important to us as individuals and to the society as a whole. A quote from Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare says, and I quote, that which we call a rose by any other name will smell as sweets, unquote. 
Interesting as these may sound, names are very vital in an individual's life. But be that as it may, some names and their owners may not be in harmony. And as such, there is a likelihood for a change of name. But why? But like I said, people change names because they have reasons for what they are doing. Some are doing it for um, criminal um, uh, purposes and some for genuine purposes. Based on this response, I went to the street to find out why the change of names by people. And I tell you, your guess may be as good as mine as regards responses. But what is your name? Have you changed your name before? If so, why? Have you ever changed your name? I have not changed my name. In my own way, what I think, why people change their name, maybe the name their parents gave to them, they don't like it, or maybe there's something they've done, they are trying to change their identity or something. If you change it, to look as if either you're a suspect or whatever. Some respondents believe that some names do not suit their persons while some say it evokes bad memories and could be embarrassing. So parents should give their children the name that will fit them continuously, that they con can continue being that name. The name will look as if you're a bad, a bad lady or a bad woman or a bad boy. Or sometimes you're wanted or suspect. Experts, however, advise on proper investigation from individuals before they make a change of names. We need to look out for one another. You know, not to judge anybody. These are difficult times, you know, with the aftermath of answers, protests, the COVID-19. These are difficult times. People are going through a lot. So rather than, you know, look upon someone with indifference or look at somebody and just, you know, want to make up your mind negatively about the person, it's going to show some concern. Research shows that there is no limit to which one can change his or her name, provided it is done in good faith. In Calabar. Erika Ivi, NTA News. For most Christians, politics is viewed as a huge task and probably a perfect opportunity to do good, especially in areas of dealing with unfairness and inequality experienced in the society. However, the public perception views Christians as being unchristian in their lives when involved in politics. Why? Can a Christian engage in politics and remain faithful to his or her calling? Let's find out with Maureen Liu Ajong. Many Christians hold tenaciously to the biblical injunction, which says when the righteous rules, the people rejoiced. And so Christians' engagement in politics is viewed by a school of thought as a window of opportunities to right the wrongs of bad governance and better the lots of the people. If we look at the pages of the scripture, we have many examples we can give. Uh, think about Daniel. You cannot say because you are a Christian, you now follow what others are doing. Even Joseph, we think of Joseph. You see, his administrative system was, was excellent. You see? And we think of somebody like Gamaliel in the book of Acts. He was a Sanhedrin. He has risen to a level of uh, being one of the 70 scholars in Israel, those who rule the land, Gamaliel. And he was the one who gave a clear understanding to what his colleagues were about doing. If you are brought up a Christian from your youth, from the cradle, that's when you started growing up, you are taught the ethics of life how to live life with your brothers and sisters, you will carry it up. So even if you, are, you find yourself in politics or position of uh, appointment, you will not deviate from it because your roots has given you a firm ground, a firm hold on your character. The thoughts and biblical perspectives of Christian leaders in this discourse is apt. And so, can a Christian engage in politics and remain faithful? If you are a Christian, before getting there, you should continue to be a Christian. You should perform. See, uh, nothing should water down your belief. Nothing should water down your activities and your characters. 
Christian life itself, uh, Christianity itself, is, is, uh, is, is what you are to practice. That is how we can know that you are a Christian. I will say yes, and I will say no. Depends on the country. And it depends on what the people look at in politics or look for in politics. Because the politics of Nigeria is not clean enough, it's not mature enough for Christians to partake in it. By right, if somebody goes to on board to rule over the people, he's a representative of the people, he is supposed to cut a part of the national cake that belongs to the people and bring it to the people. But many of our leaders are not doing the same thing. Drawing from the biblical point of view, leaders who kept faith with God had always made remarkable impact in their times, fulfilling their purposes and the will of God. It is the view of respondents that Christians can be fully engaged in politics without compromising their faith and standards expected of them. The people say Christians should be involved in politics so that good governance and the fear of God could be entrenched in purposeful leadership, which the note is needed for guidance always and in these difficult times of Nigeria. In Calabar, Maureen Leo Ajom and in News. Dressing has been described as a language for the inner minds which speaks volume of the person so dressed in the minds of those who visualize it. Correspondence in this report tries to examine Christianity and dressing and what should constitute the biblical standards for dressing. Dressing is generally described as wearing of clothed materials of a particular type to cover one's nakedness. The question is, what type of dressing could generally be accepted to be standard dressing both in the secular society and in the Christendom? Some clergymen say, though there's no particular dress code for Christians, but stress the need for modest dressing. Indecent dressing can only be corrected by change of heart and disposition. So number one, pastors should be firm in preaching the word of God concerning moderation. Number two, parents in their homes, they should not close their eyes to indecent dressing and parents themselves should not exhibit indecent dressing for their children to copy. So if you place value on yourself in your dressing, that means the world also value you based on that. But we don't have power over people when they are in the street. That's why we consign most in the church. The Bible places emphasis on modesty and decency. Others trace the history of dressing to cultural belief and the way of life of different group of people at different tribe, ethnic, country, continent, and background. Expected that as a Christian, though we do not have a particular uniform, because we've not seen it in the Bible, uniform. This is how you have to so dress, except for the priests in those days. But what is obtained in the scriptures is that we should dress modestly. We dress to cover our nakedness. Let everywhere we find ourselves, let's show people how to live like Christ. We ask you to dress to the glory of God. We should follow dressing, not fashion. Now people follow fashion. Moderate dressing should be the code of dressing of Christians. Respondents are urging the general public, both Christians and non-Christians alike, to live a life of moderation in all they do, including dressing, which they noted should be to suit a particular event and to the glory of God. In Calabar, Ode Alenyo, NTA News. Calling, according to the secular world, is described as a strong desire or feeling of duty to carry out a particular job, especially in helping other people, while career is described as a lifetime spent in doing a particular job. Is a call to service applicable to other careers in life other than those who are called to the service? But the Alenio, in this special report, sought to find answers that he has called us from the, the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. That's the first calling. 
And so after that, when you have responded to the call to repentance, God can decide to call you into different areas of professionalism. God can call you to serve as a nurse, as a medical doctor. God can call you to serve as an engineer, depending on your understanding and working with God, because everybody will not be on the pulpit. The call is an assignment that God gives to people to, to pioneer a certain interest he has in that field. Calling is of various forms. Even in the house of God, some are called to be prophets, some are called to be teachers, some are called to be apostles, and some miracle workers. Likewise, even still in the church, some are called to serve. Not all everyone will be a pastor. Every one of us, whatever walk of life we are, once we're a child of God, we are born again, we have received the commission to be a fisher of man. Others say a calling can only be ascribed to those who are called to the service of God, noting that it has nothing in common with professionalism or job satisfaction. The calling of God does not just apply to ministry alone. It has to apply in every area because God is the God of all flesh. Not everybody that, that holds the mic is called. Not everybody that is in the, in the, in the classroom is a teacher. And somebody is passionate about his job. He's passionate about his career. This is not calling. It's different from calling. Strictly, when we talk about calling, you know, we see it from the ministry perspective. We see it from, you know, um, from the church perspective. The general advice from respondents is that whatever gift God bestows on an individual, it should be responsibly used to the glory of God and for the benefit of humanity. In Calabar, Ode Alenyo, NTA News. And that's it on our Sunday special. Thank you so much for watching. Join us same time next week for another interesting edition. I am Justina.